Hi, my name is Mark Rigera from Microsoft Finance in the Server and Tool Business Group. We have seen how powerful PowerView is to explore data and business reviews. But it's also very easy to use tool out of the box. In the next video, we're going to build powerful views in a matter of minutes, which would allow us to drill down all the way to a machine for Microsoft manufacturing facilities in Puerto Rico. OK, so we're going to start with our data model. Uh, this is for uh, manufacturing production. So we have the production data on the right side that we join with the available capacity to give us an idea of our utilization of the our different machines, which we are calling work center in this case. And we're also joining those two tables with a date mapping table. Um, so we can see different uh, values, month, day, year. So we've loaded this part of pivot in the SharePoint. It's called Production Analysis FY13v6, and we're going to click on the magic button, Create PowerView Report, right here. Um, this is going to take us to our, basically our canvas that has four sections, a sections where we have uh, our data, the four tables here. We're going to filter the view here. The middle part is where we're going to create the view. And again, it has a PowerPoint lookalike slide view on the left. So the first thing we can do is put a title here. So we're going to call this Production Summary. We can make uh, this a bit smaller. And uh, we can actually reduce the font, change the, uh, change the, the, put it on Arial Black, and maybe make it a bit smaller. And in general, we're going to start with the smallest text size for this slide. And we can uh, reduce furthermore uh, the title uh, this way. So here we're going to call this production summary. And we can make it even a bit smaller. So we're going to create first a table to, that will keep so people know, uh, can see the numbers at all time. We're going to go to the production data table and click on the product. This is a grouping of the, the actual items, products, that are produced by the, the manufacturing. And we produce games, Office, Windows 8. And we're going to bring the three things that they look often. First of all is how many items they process, uh, the scrap percentage, and the last one will be uh, the utilization of those machines, which is in the table here on the available capacity. So here we have a table that shows us the products, the amount that was processed, 33 million, 6.42% scrap percentage and utilization of 54%. And we can make this a bit bigger by clicking on this icon in the menu. And this is our summary table that we're going to keep at all time. Um, so the second thing we're going to build, we're going to look a little bit at a trended view. This is a year-to-date view. And by the way, we're going to put a title to this table. So, you know, I do a lot of co copy and paste, recycle what I build. So in this case, I'm going to copy and paste the production summary, and I'm going to change the title to Year to Date uh, Summary by Product. We're going to make this smaller again, reduce the font. There we go. And we're going to put this as the title of the table we just created. So we know maybe one tad smaller. There we go. So now we're going to create a view that shows a trended view. Again, we're going to look at our production data. So we're going to look at total process. And we're going to look, look at things by product. Um, the other thing that is interesting here is that we're going to do look at things by month. So we're going to go in the date table and pick uh, final date. Um, so we have a lot of data here and we can pick a chart which will be much easier to look at. So we're going to pick a line chart that is going to show us the trend uh, by product. And here all we have to do is put change the legends and the title. So we're going to put the dates on the axis and we're going to put the product on the legend. And you're going to see the, the, the chart coming to life and be much more interesting. I noticed that I have only partial data for November. That's why it's close to zero. 
so I can do some filtering. I bring fiscal period and I'm going to take out any blank and P5 in this case is November. So P1 is July, P2 August, P3 September, P4 October and P5 November. So this is becoming interesting is that we can see that in August we peak for the Windows 8 production. We also had significant office. Those have gone down and as we get closer to the holiday sales, we're having an increased production in games. One thing I like to do is that I'm going to take in the format the, the default title so I can make my own title that pops out more. I'm going to resize this a little bit, uh, make it a little bit smaller as well, and fit it more in the top right corner. There we go. And here we're going to call this, we're going to again recycle this title, Control C, Control V, put it on the top right, and we're going to call this Units prod produce by month by product category. It's a long title, but we have placed lot, quite a bit of real estate, and we should make it very clear what this chart is about. So now we know that we produced 33 million items in the first four months, and we know that we did a lot of it uh, in August for Windows 8 going down and games took over. Now I know that I have a lot of information of all the machines. So here, what I'm going to start doing is looking at the statistics uh, by machines. And so here what we can see, we're going to look into a work center and uh, start clicking on the work center. So here, what I have is the names of all the machines I have. Uh, some produces CDs, some produces DVD, and some are focused on printing the art form for the CD or DVD. So what we're going to do here is put the amount that is processed for each of those chart, for each of those machines, and we're going to do a little graph to, to have an idea of the distribution. And uh, obviously when we have this type of chart, we're going to sort it. So here we see that we have a lot of machines that produce hardly anything. And then it's really when we start at DVD 7 that we start having uh, interesting numbers. So what we're going to do is filter these low, these machines that have very low production in the filter area. Uh, so we're going to go and click, hold and drag the work center on the filtering area. And we're going to take out the machines that are very low producing to help us see better the trends and patterns. So I'll take out blank, I'm going to take out CD, and you're going to see those disappear from the bar charts. I'm going to take out DVD, uh, offset, uh, CD4, I'm going down the order, CD2, uh, print 3, and print. And I'm going to take finally CD3 and CD1. Okay. So now I have all my DVD machines and my print. I don't, I'm not showing the CDs, but I can see in my filter area what I filter. So, uh, and again, I'm going to take out the chart title to have more real estate, and I'm going to resize it just right here. And I can see again very easily the amount process. Um, since the three metrics that matter are process, scrap, and utilization, we're going to try to see those three metrics for each of the machines. So again, we do Control C, Control V, and we're going to just change the metric here uh, from process to scrap percentage. So we move a little bit to the right. Maybe we resize it, make it a little bit smaller and we're going to be able to uh, see all these metrics at a very detailed level. So click on my chart, and I'm going here to the right. I'm going to take out process, and I'm only going to click here on scrap percentage. Again, every time you have a bar chart, you need to sort it in descending order, and I have the machine sorted by scrap percentage. Now the last piece to do is by utilization. Again, I do Control c Control v drag the chart at the bottom, and all I have to do is take out this metric, which is scrap percentage, and go to my uh, 
available capacity table that has my utilization. Boom, and then I sort it in descending order. So this is very handy because uh, now we have basically all the machines uh, information in terms of unit produced, scrap percentage, and utilization. And we should put a title to make this very clear. So what we're going to do here is again copy and paste the title we did for the unit produce. Here we can take this one. Control C, Control V. We can put this on the on the top, uh, on the left, and then we're going to call this total process. Same as the table on top. Then we move a little bit to the middle. We're going to call this scrap percentage. Maybe we're moving a bit more to the right. And then finally, uh, we're going to call this utilization percentage. Um, and we can put another title here that shows, so we know this is by machine. And we're going to have the exact uh, a view that is going to show us the trend also for the first uh, four months by month. So we're going to call, we're going to put a little line charts here and by month. So we can put the title. So here we're going to take uh, again, the amount of data, uh, the amount of units produced, and we're going to show this by month. So we're going into a date table, and we're going to pick a date. And here we're going to put a line chart, which works well for time series data. Again, we're going to take the chart title out, and we're going to resize it a little bit. And this is going to give us an idea of our production trend, uh, which we see as peaked in August and has gone down since then in September and October. And here we can put some data labels. Uh, we press automatic and you can see 11.8 million, 10 million in September and 8.6 in, in, in October. Um, same thing, we're going to pick, we're going to do another line graph here, we're going to do final date and we're going to pick scrap percentage um, and we're going to show again a line chart. Uh, same as before, we're going to take out the chart title and we're going to give it some label and we're going to resize it so we can see easily the trends and patterns. Let's try to align it with the chart on the left. There we go. And we can see so for the last one, we can just control C, control V uh, for utilization and simply take out utilization and uh, go back and pick the utilization metric percentage uh, that shows right there. So the last thing we can do since we have print and DVD machines is put a filter for the print and the DVD machines. So in this case, I've, I've built a little mapping table that shows me the type. So if I click on type, it's going to appear here and I can change it to a slicer. Um, and here I can make this a bit bigger. So in order to make sure people know it's there and we're going to make one font bigger. So in, in 10, in a few minutes, we create a very powerful dashboard. Keep in mind that all this data is connected. So here I know I produce 32 million units, 6% scrap rate, annualization of 56%. But I can go down and look at, for example, the machine that is the most utilized, DVD-16. And as I click on that, all the charts are going to change. And we can see that utilization is at 88% year to date went up to 91%, the scrap rate went down right below 10%, how many machines we, how many units we produce by month, and we can see in the ranking how uh, this machine is doing in terms of units process, it's in the bottom third, but it's towards the top in terms of scrap percentage. So all this data is connected, and you'll be able to also filter uh, by print or CD, DVD. So if we click on print, 
you'll be able to see just the print machines. If you click on CD DVD, you'll be able to see just the DVD machine. And you can click here to see all together. You have seen how easy it is to create a very powerful dashboard with PowerView. Let me show you what you can do with it with a general manager of Microsoft Puerto Rico operations.